Welcome to the Wolverine Digest Podcast, the best spot for objective and authentic coverage of Michigan athletics. If you want open dialogue, honest opinions, and in-depth coverage of the maize and blue, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's your host, Brandon Brown. Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, Man, I'm I'm mad at myself a little bit because we came out like gangbusters a couple weeks ago. And I was like, yes, podcast back in action. And then we and then we we missed last week again. That's not anybody's fault up here but my own. I was out of town. We had some uh we had some dude, I don't know if you guys have been following along with the Sports Illustrated stuff that's happening out there, like with the changing of ownership and all the weirdness. I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but that that really threw some things off last week with our website and what we were doing. Still can't really do a lot of stuff with video, but anyway, here we are. We're back this week. I'm excited to have us back. We are down one man, Scott Brown, not with us tonight, (laughs) handling some tax tax information and some uh, important things as an adult, but he... Let me get your guys' opinion. He wanted to come on for 10 minutes, and I told him not to bother. I said, you know, <laughs> he had an appointment at 7.30, and I was like, oh, I don't know, Dad. Like, you're going to have to leave. And then we got started at about 7.04 anyway. Right. I, 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 He wanted to be here, and he said he might try to hustle back and be on before we're over. He's, he's clearly enjoying this more than I thought he was going to, but <laughs> he said he'd be back next week. So I don't know. Did I do the right thing, kicking my dad off the show altogether? I don't know. I feel kind Let of bad. Let him take care of his business. <laughs> There'd be more shows. My, That's my it. Question, well, my question is, is what is he doing during the day? <laughs> That's a great why, point. Why are we waiting until 730 at night to go do our taxes? I, I, your yeah. dad's retired, isn't he? These were, reti- you know, he's got a lot of rusty chains to sell out there at his barn, and uh, who the hell knows what he's doing, dude? I don't know. He got tackled by a dog in the backyard the other day. That's a hilarious. Thing. Uh, you know, all of our dads getting up there a little bit. You could have had him on just to tell that story. I know. I, I still plan to. Just, I still just plan to get the to. show rolling that way, and then send him on his way. See, that would have been a good start. Good lead. Variety's the spice of life. Exactly. Nick, Dan, your guys' dads, I think I got my dad by a, a year or two, or they're close. They're all pretty close in there. Have they have they done the falling thing? Has this started for your dads yet? Tripping and falling over stuff? My dad's been doing that. That's been <laughs> I'll be out on the farm and I'll just they'll go over it. Yeah, man. So I yeah, he's just down for the count. Yep. Man. I just want to wrap them in bubble wrap as they get a little bit older and <laughs> dad's send them on their way. Like, I just seen your dad like 20 minutes ago. Hey, I saw a- him. Not too long ago, too, but I saw him. It was on my security camera. He came over. I wasn't home. I saw him on my security (laughs) camera. He came over the house. Speaking of speaking, speaking of the security cameras, unfortunately, every fall has not taken place in front of the cameras that my parents do have. I was thinking the same thing when you said that. I'm like, if he had a camera in the backyard, that'd have been great. Pretty upset about that. Right there. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. That would absolutely be played on the podcast if that happens. So I need to tell my mom to get those cameras in the right spots. All right. So since two weeks ago, our last show, I was trying to look this up. Our last show was on March 20th, I believe. If I got the date right. Yeah, That's March said, 20th. Yeah. Been so we we kind of did the math and figured out that we haven't really talked about. It, it had just happened. Greg Scruggs, I don't even know if you could call him former Michigan defensive line coach. He was there for all about a week or two. Did he have um, time to meet the whole team? Did yeah, I don't know. Jacket? I mean, I, I I really don't know what had happened yet to that point. But unfortunately, he made a he made a boneheaded decision. Yeah, got in got in trouble for a, a DUI. You know, you never like to see that, obviously. And I, we never, you know, as the media, we never even got to talk to the guy. I don't know anything about him. Um, you know, was looking forward to what he was going to bring. He had some high marks coming in. Unfortunately, you know, he had to resign because of that. And it, it is what it is. Now, Michigan yeah. has hired. Lou Esposito to take over the defensive line position. So Sharon Moore's staff is complete again. Uh, and I don't I don't know a ton about Lou Esposito. He's done a lot of stuff in the state of Michigan. Um I'm trying to bring this up here. So he he started off, uh, he went to Memphis. That's where he played his college football. He's an offensive lineman. Then he was at St. Joseph's in Indiana. And then after that, it was all Michigan stuff. He was at Western. He was at Ferris. He was a head coach at Davenport out in Grand Rapids. And then most recently was at Western Michigan. He actually got hired to coach at Memphis, right. uh, but never even, he, he was there for like a month and then he took the job at Michigan. So returned to his alma mater for a very, very short amount of time. 
and now he's going to be at Michigan. So I guess we were not going to spend a ton of time, and I don't expect you guys to know much about this guy. I don't either. But when when you have turnover like you already had, so you went from Mike Elston last year, who was obviously really good. Um, you get Greg Scruggs for a couple weeks. Now you've got a new guy. I mean, are you thinking this is an issue? Michigan's trying to find depth along the defensive line. You know you've got a couple studs in Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant feel pretty good about your starting edges, but now you're trying to figure everything out and you've got another new guy in there who hasn't been there very long as you're trying to go through spring ball. I mean, is this a, I don't know, is this a big deal or would you rather have this kind of crap happen now? I mean, I don't know, Dan, you're making some faces. What do you think? It's obviously not how you draw it up. I mean, it's obviously a bad look for recruiting. It's a bad, you know, you know that, you know, he, he had two weeks, but you know, he's reaching out to recruits. (laughs) <laughs> you know, that's as soon as he's on the job, he's probably reaching out to them before he's meeting the team that the players on the team that's already here. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a bad look there. I mean, I think you, you got to think Sharon Moore thought he was the guy for the job, right? Esposito sure. wasn't his first pick. So, right. I mean, that's not great, but I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's not yeah, like, I don't think this is, is great. No, I don't think it's too alarming necessarily. It's a boneheaded, stupid mistake. I want to point right. out, I read Angelique Chengelis' article about this. She was first on the story. And it happened about two or three hours into St. Patrick's Day in the middle of the night, 2 or 3 a.m. Mm. So that's silly. Just get get it out of the program. But at defensive line, that's been a strength of the Wolverines team the last several years. If you're going to have new coaches in, they can kind of try to pick up right where they left off. Yeah. yeah. I can, I'm going to kind of – just go with what Eric said right there. Like boneheaded decision number one. Uh, get an Uber. You know, <laughs> I, know, get, I don't get know. A lift. What, yeah. I'm in pretty today's sure you world, can really, it. you can't. Pays, you, can't you can't get somebody to drive you. Well, um, <laughs> no, yeah. but in terms of you know making making the split now, and to your point about you know is it better for it to happen now or later uh, in the season? I think if it was going to happen, now's the time. And I think Sharon Moore did the right thing and cutting ties right away and yeah. saying, hey, the the culture here is we're not we're not going to play games with this kind of stuff. We're going to, you're going to let you go and we're going to start clean. Um, yeah. And I think that even says something to recruits just says, Hey, you know, we're, we're, there's no funny business here. Like we are, we're Michigan. We're not going to deal with these distractions. We're going to just cut ties and we're going to move forward. Yeah. I don't know if I want, it was labeled as a resignation, but we all know that that's right. not exactly what that always means. And, and right. it, I would assume, you know, Hey, Write it how you want, but you're gone, man. Sorry, you just can't be doing that stuff a week into the job or two weeks into the job, whatever it was. Um, and yeah, it's just not a good look. I mean, anything, anytime you know something legal happens or a guy makes a bad decision and you got to fire him or move on from him, especially so quick, it's just not great. Dan's point, I hadn't even really thought about that. Yeah, like he's probably in the vehicle on the way to his first day on the job talking to recruits. Like you've got to get that going immediately. Recruits then, on campus that weekend. Yeah. And then, you know, two weeks later, you pull the plug and maybe, you know, I don't know who's who's ever doing, you know, clean up on that, trying to say, yeah, we had a little something happen. There's going to be a new coach now. Let's let us figure it out. That's that's obviously not what you want to be dealing with. Yeah. Kids are coming to campus right now, visiting, obviously, spring balls going on and the spring games right around the corner. So, yeah, I mean, he was probably talking. Again, I can't wait to see you on April 20th at the spring game. Going to be awesome to to finally meet you and see what you you know, how you fit. And now he's gone. Lou Esposito comes in. He's only been there for a couple days. Now he's got to pick up the pieces a little bit. But, yeah, Michigan's done a great job there. They've got some really good dudes in, in position already that are going to play this year a lot. And that that's, you know, I think when you're – I think when your players kind of set the tone more than maybe even the coaches do at times, like you, you're obviously got a pretty healthy thing. And that's kind of been Michigan's MO over the last couple of years. So looking forward to meeting Lou Esposito. We've been able to – talked to a couple of the assistant coaches that have been hired now that spring ball is going on, got a chance to meet obviously Wink Martindale a couple weeks ago. We're going to talk about him a little bit because we, we missed out on that last week. And I know we all wanted to talk about Wink. Um, Brian Jean Marie back in the program, talked to him earlier this week. I'm um, still looking to looking forward to talking to some of these other new guys that we, uh, we haven't had a chance to meet yet. Lou Esposito being one, another one that we got a chance to meet. Love everything about how he conducts himself so far. Sharon Moore loves the guy, calls him a beast. He's incredible on the recruiting trail. Regardless of what the OSU slap dicks say, he's a good coach and he's good on the recruiting trail. <laughs> Tony Alford has already had many big time recruits on campus. Guys that, I mean, dude, I, I'm just going to call a spade a spade. Guys that Mike Hart didn't even recruit. Like dudes high enough on the hunt, you know, the top 100 list that Mike Hart really didn't even go after. 
Tony Alford's had them on campus already, including one dude named Bo Jackson, which is just hilarious. Um, he is from Cleveland. Ohio State's also high on him. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, just the thoughts on Alfred as a coach. He's already getting big time dudes on campus. This was one of the questions that Zaxon in our our, our our potential six podcast panel member who has not been here yet. He did send in a question like, is this the year that Michigan gets? Well, they did last year, too. I guess Jordan Marshall was a pretty big get uh, out of Ohio. But, you know, is this a year where Michigan can stack up a couple big time backs because they run the ball a ton? They've got Tony Alford. Now they've got kids coming in on campus. Like, is this Eric, you've reached out to some. I don't know if you've reached out to any recruit uh, running backs or not but you have been talking to some recruits. What are your thoughts on Alfred coming right in, making a splash right away? And yes, getting a kid to commit is not the same as just getting them on campus, but it's a right. start. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. He's off to a great start. Um, he had success getting high profile backs to commit when he was at Ohio state. So mm -hmm. we've seen he can seal the deal. And this year he has a really special opportunity in my eyes. He gets a chance to work with Donovan Edwards and kind of show what his vision will be for Michigan's running backs going forward. And Donovan has so much straight line speed, he can do a lot for the team. And that'll be a great example for how running backs will function in the Michigan offense under Alfred. Yeah, this this running back room, I'm so intrigued by, man. You've got Kalel Mullings coming back. Obviously, Donovan's going to be kind of the, the, the centerpiece. And you've got some younger guys who have shown some things too. Jordan Marshall being one of them. Um, ben Cobb, the big back that had, you know, showed some pretty good things last year a little bit. I, I don't know. I we talked about this quite a bit during the last show, the Tony Alford thing, just kind of in general from top to bottom. Coming from Ohio State, his track record, he is an older dude now at this point. But what we think about him in general, I mean, <laughs> we tried to we tried to talk about it without disparaging Mike Hart because he's Mike Hart. I mean, he's a legend at Michigan. He did a good job while there, but I think we all were kind of in agreement that like recruiting could have been better at that position, and it seems like it's kind of headed that way i don't know dan nick what are your thoughts on again i know you guys aren't in the building neither am i even and i do this for a living but what alfred's done in the short time here well i mean you, <laughs> you, you, yeah i didn't know i was gonna go first <laughs> yeah you, you you already touched on him getting guys on campus and i think um his ability to have those higher end guys guys that like you said mike wasn't even even trying to bring in yeah um if if the I think if you get into the season and our run game, you know, under Sharon Moore looks like it did under Jim Harbaugh, the running game, the, the running backs are going to get a ton of carries and we're still going to be able to put that kind of offensive line, which we'll get to later on the board. Uh, if you're put yourself in a high school senior making a decision, you're the number one running back in the country. Like, what are you looking at? If you get in season and it looks like it did, like those guys are still going to get those kind of carries and the offense is going to look like it did. And he's able to get, the top guys to come in and, and, and pay attention to that. I, I think, yeah, I think it could be huge. I think he could potentially bring in some guys that, you know, might be, <laughs> dare I say better than Corum someday. I don't know. You know, if you're yeah. bringing in the best guy in the country, the, the, just to take a look, I mean, yeah, you what have you seen over the last two years that would make, if you're that, if you're that guy, what would, what have you seen over the last two years of Michigan that would make you not interested in this program? Yeah, yeah. all you got to see is that it looks the same under Sharon Moore, and we all think it will, right? Yeah, multiple four stars have been on multiple four stars have been on campus in the 2025 yeah. class. Mark 2026 Jesus. five stars like begging for a Michigan offer publicly. I mean, like that wasn't really happening before, and well, Alfred that, has been credited that for was a lot. Be of that. My question is, why was Mike Hart not targeting these guys? Yeah. It's not like our run game has been bad. Yeah, yeah. You know, Good call. Call. that's what I mean. All you got to do is make them interested. You yeah. had two guys Let's last year that were thousand yard the season before that were darn near thousand yard rushers and Corum without getting hurt might be up for the Heisman. Yeah. I mean, yeah, those no guys, yeah, those guys true. should have been lining up at the door. Why were we not going going after them? Yeah. Um, yeah, you I don't know if you can see point. in the comments, CJ put in there, the more, yeah. <laughs> more Ohio state talks crap about him. It just reaffirms that he does a good job. And I think he's right. Ohio State's salty. Cause they know we got somebody that's going to bring in the talent that they've had the last 10 years. Like yeah. they're worried. I think I think yeah. Ohio State they got a decent guy to replace Alfred. I think they're pretty happy with that hire. I know Ryan Day tried to take like a veiled shot at Harbaugh. Did you guys see that? He's like unlike unlike some people who are born into a football family or something. I'm like, come on, dude, give yeah. me a break. But 
Yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, with Ohio, the, like if if they really didn't care, like they just they wouldn't say anything. But they're right. they're like having to convince themselves and getting these arguments. Like Alfred has been a stud and a staple of that staff for a decade. And there's no other way. Yeah, he's a little older now. Maybe some things have changed. He's doing things a little differently. But I still think, and I love Mike Hart. I still think it's an upgrade. I still think he's going to do better on the recruiting trail. And he's done a good job with the guys that he's had in his in his yeah. room before, too. So Absolutely. A, a very important part, I believe, is that Michigan's offense has shown it can support two very productive running backs. At yes, the yes. So that works so strongly on, on the recruiting field when you can pitch. Okay, you'll get – um, featured workload, but there's another guy here that'll take it off of you too. And we can balance the carries around. You won't be driven into the dirt your freshman season. We have a plan for you. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of attention being, being put on Tony Alford right now, what he's doing, how he's going to recruit and how different it's going to look. And again, it's early. It's spring ball. He hasn't landed any of these guys yet, but even getting them on campus is a change from what we've seen in the past. And, um, you know, he can, he can sell a lot. He can sell a lot about what he did when he was at Ohio state. And now the fact that he's at Michigan with an even more running back friendly system and alignment, you know, a group of linemen that are expected to be good. And and to Dan's point, a, a scheme that's like, Dude, why wouldn't every running back want to go there? It just seems to make, uh, you know, it seems to make perfect sense to kind of get that, get that lined up. On Michigan's offense, like there, there's a lot. Well, this is pretty much what we're going to talk about today. Michigan's offense. So there's the running back room is probably the most solid. Um, no question marks, really. You know who's RB one. You know who's going to get carries behind them. Maybe down the depth chart a little bit, you do wonder, like, are we going to see Cole Cabana this year? Is there going to be somebody else kind of pop up and do some different things? That would be about the only question mark. Tight end one, super solid with Colston Loveland, but beyond him, eh, I don't know. We'll see. Offensive line, we're going to get into pretty in depth here in a little bit, replacing all five slash six starters from last year. And then now wide receiver, too. We talked about this a little bit last week, but is there, I'm just going to ask it straight out. We heard Tyler Morris talk this week, and he was kind of talking a big game. I'm not trying to shoot him down. He showed some flashes of some pretty good ability, especially in that Rose Bowl against Alabama, that long touchdown. I didn't know he had that in him. I wasn't even sure he could do stuff like that. But he he talked this week, and he said, if I'm in the slot, I'm going to make a play. If I'm outside, that I want to be that guy. If you need me to block, I can be that guy. Does Michigan have a true wide receiver one on this roster right now? It Can yeah. it be Tyler Moore? Is like – do you think I he's think talking a big game or can he be that guy? No, Tyler's got that in his bag. So he suffered a knee injury between like mm -hmm. his junior season and then what we see now in between there, he, he had to recover from that. But watching his huddle tape from high school when he was partnered with J.J. McCarthy, I remember he was a burner. He was taking yeah. the top off of defenses and they had to account for that speed that would be running downfield into their secondary. So yeah. he, he reminds me a lot of uh, some Donovan Peoples-Jones to him. You could put him on the outside, and like he said, he's got a frame where he can be strong enough to go up and make a catch or you know a quick dig route and secure the ball. But he has the speed to stretch the defense too, so I think he does offer a lot. Like I said, that that catch and run against Bama, I mean, I think it was a linebacker that was initially chasing him, then a DB did get into the mix, but he had enough speed to get all the way down the sideline, get into the end zone strong enough to reach the ball across the pylon. To Eric's point, I remember I was covering recruiting more – more completely at that time he was not like even ready to play as a true freshman so like what we're seeing now yeah. is him just kind of like coming into his form because he tore his knee up pretty bad i think i thought it was actually during his senior year i could be wrong on that yeah that could good. go back and look but i know he wasn't ready to compete as a true freshman um i mean beyond him i'm not gonna say i'll, I'll let nick and dan jump in nick if there's you know the receiver's First of all, they've never had a huge role at Michigan. We can start there first. Like, what do you really need your wide receiver one to do? But, it, it, you know, is Tyler Morris that guy or is it somebody else? You know, I was just thinking about this the other day. Um, the the big tip, prototypical wide receiver that we had when we were growing up watching mm -hmm. Michigan, you know, you always you had Amani Toomer, you had uh, Braylon Edwards, yeah. you had dudes on the outside, 6'3", six, 6'4", that could go up and get a contested ball, someone that you had to double cover if you were the def defense, like if someone you had to 
put two guys on all the time. And it felt like once Rich Rod came in there, we got real short <laughs> at yeah. the wide receiver position. <laughs> and it's it's been an uphill climb ever since. And not to say that we haven't gotten production out of that. I mean, we've had receivers that have gotten production, even though they might lack the size. Um, I just don't know if, if we have that on the roster right now, that big guy to throw it to. Um, luckily, we got Colston. Colston, yeah. Love I was going to say, I, I don't see it from the wide receiver he, position he can myself. be that guy. Um, but I don't think we have that person on that yeah, right there. The, the, yeah. the big body guy, you know, I think you can split Donovan Edwards out there. I think he's going to end up probably in the past game, maybe even more so than a he lot. was last year. Yeah. Um, but I think it's going to be more um, receptions by committee when it comes to the wide yeah. receiver group. That's just so, kind of how I envision it with Colson Loveland being the stud, almost like a Brock Bowers type. He is a stud. There's no doubt. I, he may end up being the leading receiver on the team. He's that good. Um, I'll shift the question just a little bit for Dan to close us out on this topic. Uh, Dan, my, Nick, myself, we're all 40, pushing 40. Are we Are we turning into this old man where we? you, you think you got to have a 6'3"? Do you even need that anymore? Do you need a 6'3"? And to CJ's point, I think he's also in our age bracket. Who's the big body go-to guy? Do, do you need that anymore? I mean, look at look at some of the guys that dominate the NFL. Tyreek Hill. certainly nice Justin in the red Jefferson. zone. Yeah, okay. All right. I mean, you're, you're not going to – the reason you're not going to have them here is because you're not going to use them enough. You're not going <laughs> to yeah. use them the way they want to be used for the same reason that getting those big-time running backs on campus to watch this offense is a big deal. Even if they take a look at Michigan, they're not going to see what they want to see. Yeah. So, you know, I, I I don't see anybody on this roster that's really going to take that step. And I don't I don't really see you bringing the top guys here. That don't mean you can't get guys. I mean, obviously, yeah. you don't have to have top 50 guys to it turn. It into only studs, takes one, Dan. It just takes one. Yeah. It just takes <laughs> one. But I mean, we had Nico nice Collins the zone, back in the day. We just didn't have anybody kind of numbers to, yeah. to make other guys want to come here. So, yeah. you know, no, you've you got, don't need them. <laughs> you've got guys <laughs> like, I guess like, is my answer. Did we have it last year? Nope. And we won really. the net. Yeah, not really. So, I, mean, I mean, Roman Wilson wasn't that no. big-bodied guy, but he made plays. Right. Cornelius Johnson was the big-bodied guy, yeah, but he good. wasn't like a go-to. I mean, he was a great – he was a good player. I like Cornelius Johnson. Mm -hmm. Made some really big plays, but he wasn't the guy every week, week in, week out, that teams had to scheme for and put on the top – of the of the scouting report he just wasn't that guy and that's okay he he's yeah. probably going to end up playing on Sundays he'll probably be pretty good but at Michigan he just wasn't really utilized that way to Nick's point you go back to Nico Collins Donovan Peoples Jones never had a 100 yard receiving game at Michigan not one that's Nico shocking. Collins has now turned into a bona fide number one receiver in the NFL uh, probably going to take a little bit probably of a number two now. Yeah, to step on Diggs. <laughs> that team is looking scary, by the way, the Houston Texans. But anyway, it's all valid. It's all relevant. And to Dan's point, too, I, I remember thinking the same thing. Oh, God, when Michigan was recruiting Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback in the country, five-star from Belleville, I'm like, bro, he's going to come watch Michigan play, and they throw the ball 11 times. He's not coming there. <laughs> like, you hate to admit it, but it's it works the same way with receivers. They want to catch passes. They want to make plays. They don't want to finish the year with 37 grabs and four touchdowns. They just don't. Um, but on the flip side of that, then where are the where are the stud running backs who want to carry it 25 times a game and score 20 touchdowns? You got to have one or the other, I would feel like. And maybe we're kind of shifting towards that a little bit with uh, with Alfred recruiting. I'm I'm curious. I like Tyler Morris. I like Samaj Morgan. But yeah, neither of them are the to Nick's you know to use Nick's term the prototype six three six four big mm -hmm. body red zone they're just not those guys that they can make plays but i do think <clears throat> excuse me i do think portal shopping for a wide receiver is probably important after spring ball mm -hmm. i think you, yeah. you try to get one more maybe two i think cj said that yeah find one or two in the portal go from there um because beyond even beyond those two guys like is there another guy that's caught a ball carmelo english is no <laughs> longer with the team uh, he had at least a touchdown last year you, you're going to, I don't know. I don't know if we want, is this, is this mean to say, do we want 60 snaps of Peyton O'Leary? I don't know if that's the move, you know? Oh boy. I don't know. I think you do need to, um, I think you do need to go and try to find a playmaker in the portal, but again, hard to shop that. that what do you, Dan, that, Dan, what do you say? What do you say to a receiver? If you need one bad and you want it <laughs> in your Michigan staff and you're trying to uh, get them. 
just show them. Yeah, Frederick Moore. Okay, there's another. The trophy we just won, I guess. Yeah, (laughs) that's not bad. (laughs) That's about all. That's about all I got. But I mean, that's your. your, your It makes me think of our conversation last time about the quarterbacks. Like, and when when I said like, I don't know if it really matters because yeah, we're not going to do it, and we don't have the tools to do it if the dude can throw. So let's kind of tune this thing up and run it a little bit of a different way. Yeah, yeah, just, just pitch opportunity. It's there. Yeah, and it's 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 an NFL yeah, friendly you system. You know, you will you, you'll learn a lot that translates to the next level. I know, but I don't know, man. You guys were you guys were dynamic pass catchers in your day, Nick and Dan. You want to catch caught, the ball, right? Caught about eight caught balls like, as a senior. I yeah. caught maybe like ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, new low, new low through varsity football, a lot like Michigan football. Throw it thirty two times in a row. You know, just get out there. Hey, How was that all. offensive line on that new Lothrop squad? Strong, small, but strong, right? That's average what I would one, say. Average probably, what, 170? <laughs> <laughs> not very big. Not yeah. very big. No no, uh, no, Joe Moore award winners in that Dude, group, I'll tell not you. Not quite? No, 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 not quite. But anyway, still pretty uh, still pretty fun to think about that back in the day. And, and like Dan said, Michigan made it work without a dynamic outside receiver. Roman Wilson, he, he – I think he ended up with what ten or twelve touchdowns. He was pretty damn productive. He was pretty well, good. Yeah, he but robot. wasn't yeah, wasn't that prototype. So. Our ability to stretch the field, but he still yeah. wasn't that big guy that you could Correct. target in the red zone. Like I'm, you know, you know, that's one thing you could tell wide receivers is, hey, defenses are going to put eight, nine in the box. You're, You're going to get up. opportunities one on one to make something. a play. That's one thing you can tell them. Okay, and you know, honestly, I think that could be a strong selling point to running backs. If you if you remember. Blake Corum has so many carries from inside the five last year, and he ended up with well over 20, 25, 27 touchdowns. Yeah. That's, there's a reason for that. Yeah. It, it, yeah they found a way to make it work. Here, by the way. What was that? I said, I Who's think we're that? overlooking somebody. Who are we overlooking? We line up really... on the outside. Dono. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I said that earlier. I think Edwards yeah. is going to be out there. <laughs> line him up out there. Yeah. yeah he's going to be out there. You know, he will be. You know, how much this year? We'll see. Formation. You know, your two outside <laughs> receivers are a tight end and a running back. And hey, if they're your best pass catchers, you throw yeah. them out there and you let them make some plays. And Oregon um, quarterback can run too. I had this down the right. list a little bit. Let's let's jump into it then right now. That's a good segue into it. Donovan Edwards. Um I, I love that kid, man. I've been you know, going back again to cover and recruiting. I've known him since he was in like ninth grade when he could barely put together a a, a, a sentence to an answer. Now he's Dude, he's so mature, and his answers are so well thought out. Having him at the press conference earlier this week or last week, I guess it was, was was just awesome. He looks freaking jacked. He's up 14 pounds. He he looks the part of, of everything you would ever want for a running back. We know how he can catch it out of the backfield. We know he's got the straight line speed. The vision has caught up. The patience has caught He's He's, he's everything you want in a back. Michigan yeah. is dealing with a brand new starting offensive line. They're trying to find a quarterback. They're trying to find an entire identity on offense. Are you buying? We'll go. We'll go Nick first this time. Are you buying or selling the Donovan Edwards breakout season? And that probably could mean something different to each of us. But we've seen the flashes. Obviously, he's got the ability. Are you buying a mon- a monster year out of Donovan Edwards? I'm going to buy it uh, compared to last year. Well, yeah. I think I think last year was a little, I, I mean, he would probably even say it too, a little bit disappointing in terms of his overall numbers. Um, obviously, in the national championship game, he broke out. Um, but I could see him being, you know, the guy this year. But like you said, it's going to look different. It's not going to look like what Blake Corum did. It's not going to be 25, 30 carries a game, I don't think. It might be 20 touches a game, but it it's going to be a mix of the run and the pass game, um, even – possibly some trick plays throwing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I see him. I see him having a breakout season. I, there's, there's, you don't have to sugarcoat it. There is no question. He would tell you last year was a disappointment. He obviously finished with a bang, had an incredible national title game. But before that, dude, it was like all year, everybody up in the booth. And I know the fan, everyone was like, what's up with Dono? Like every time he get the ball, he get tackled in the backfield. He wasn't making a lot of big plays that, you know, even sometimes they'd get down close, and they take him out, and here come, you just wonder, like, God, what's that doing for his confidence? And now he's back. Blake is gone. He knows he's the guy. Eric, if I guess let's let's just put one stat out there. What would be a successful year for Donovan Edwards in terms of touchdowns scored? Like, how many times you just Double mentioned Blake's number? Sure. 
you just mentioned Blake's number, which was crazy. I think yeah. led the entire country actually. What's a what's what's the successful year for Donovan Edwards getting in the end zone? It, it's got to be ten plus one barometer that will really define if Donovan has a successful season in my eyes or not is how consistent he is. Mm-hmm. As you've mentioned, we see that the talent is there. The raw physical skills they're pretty indisputable. He's got it, but he needs to piece it together on a regular basis. And if he doesn't do that, Michigan's going to really struggle next season. So in order to do that we need to expect about a touchdown per game running. I don't, I don't care if it's through the air or running. We don't need to be pedantic in that sense. But Donovan needs to be around 10, 12 touchdowns for it to be a really solid year in my eyes. Yeah, I mean, he, he showed you know, Ohio State a couple seasons ago, Washington obviously in the title game. Like, I mean, dude, any, any handoff, he's, he could take it to the house. Even more of a threat in that way than Blake Corum was, in my opinion. But Blake was a little yeah. more consistent, had the more forward lean, better vision, a little bit better in the hole. But Donovan's got that big playability, and he could he could really do a lot. Dan, I'll finish with this about Donovan Edwards. It, he, there isn't that. Well, we'll see what Kalel Mullings looks like. He's been pretty damn impressive at times too. But there's not like a one-two punch now like there was last year, where you're like, dude. I mean, they might be the best duo in the country when you're talking about Donovan and Blake. I don't think people would quite say that about Donovan and now Kalel. Is is this like Donovan eighty five? The the rest of the room fifteen, or do, what do you think the rotations? I mean, it's a tough position too. We all know that. What's it look no, like? No, and I think what you're bringing up is the reason it's hard to put a pin on what Donovan's touchdown numbers could be because I think Mullings is going to get all them short yardage carries that's at the fair. goal. Yeah, um, great point. So, or or orgy. Or, or well, that's yeah. If, and, and if, if yeah. Orgy's the starter, I mean, he's going to be mixed into that as well. But even if he's I not mean, the starter, he might. There might be packages. Be package if he just comes in on the right. goal line, and we've yeah, got three options. Sure. Oh, I, I, there's no, there's no question he'll be in there, whether yep. he's a starter or not. I mean, they did it last year. I mean, he's he's going to yeah. be in there. But you're you might be right. It might be something at the goal line too. But I, you know, I I look at it a little different. I go, man, I I hope ten's not his number because where where's the rest of the production coming from? Yeah, yeah. You know, we just talked about the past game. I mean, obviously Colson Loveland, but outside of those two guys, I mean, you can't look to a, a star touchdown scorer on this team. So yeah. I hope it's more than 10. Yeah. I yeah. Think, I mean, like, I, I think when you made the point you made about Mullings, I think he'll yeah. get a lot of those short yardage ones. Will. So the, what worries me is that Don, the Don's uh, 10 touchdowns, are, are they all going to come off big chunk plays? Yeah. Are they going to come off, you know, that kind of thing. I almost look at it as, for me, a break, a good season for him would be keep the chains moving on third down, be yeah. an option for me out of the backfield yeah. in the passing game, like yeah. keep us on the field. And if we're getting touchdowns as a team, because he's, he's keeping us moving, I would say that's successful. So it's hard. It's hard yeah. to say like, is the well, touchdown total the only though. thing, you know, but yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I Last agree. year. I mean, it was pretty clear. Blake Corn was getting those carries. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, is he going to be like, okay with Khalil Mullen getting all the touchdown yeah. opportunities? <laughs> Yeah, but I mean Blake Corum was clearly elite at sniffing out the end zone. He he was, you know, rarely did it take him more than one try. I mean, there were times, but you know, Donovan's better at other things. I think that I think everybody sees that. And yeah, I mean, if if you've got, <laughs> I've been down on the field before. I would die if I tried to tackle Kalel Mullings. He looks like a truck yeah. in a uniform. Like it's just he's just a big dude man i mean obviously he was he used to play linebacker he was recruited out of high school to play running back as well notre dame liked him there boston college up from where he was from wanted him to play running back and he's 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 not just a a linebacker who can do some he looks like a running back now at this point like he's he's a true back and i think yeah he is going to get a ton of work inside the goal line because that's going to be his strength and he's going to be really hard to handle but yeah donovan uh you know if it's Close to a touchdown a game. I mean, I think he would probably tell you, I'd like to score every week. I'm out there. He'd probably tell you that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what they look like, yeah, it could be different. It could be different. Is, is there a guy on the team that you could tackle? Uh, Kickers. I mean, I, I don't what, know. not Tommy on Nolan accident. Like, like where you fall down true. the dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me find, who's the lightest person on the team? I mean, I'm I'm 220 these days. I think I could knock someone a little bit. A little I bit? You could off you get in the way. <laughs> It's just, gotta be, it's gotta just be gotta get them to stumble. It's gotta be the north south drill where they can't go sideways. Oh, golly, yeah. that'd be that'd be in that'd be in, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. But it, there's no question. If I could look at all the players, I could pick guys that I'd be like, I'll give it a shot. And Mullings <laughs> is not on the list. That's that's a better way to explain it. I'm not even trying. That's, that's fair. 
<laughs> I'm not even trying with him. Who's Grant? Who's Grant? Kenneth Grant? Hell no. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. He'd be, he'd be he'd one of the down. last ones. <laughs> he'd be one of the last ones. Yeah, Adam Samaha. Oh, boy. I'll try to Don't tackle play. Samaha, the kicker, freshman kick, well, sophomore kicker. Now, I'll give it a shot. He's about a buck sixty-five, I think. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, that's a that's a fair point. I don't want to tackle any of those guys. Um, speaking of someone, this sucks. I hate to have to talk about it, but speaking of tackling, uh, elite at it, great in space, coach on the field, one of the most valuable defenders, and now he will not be playing. It doesn't sound like it. Rod Moore, all reports uh, that he tore his ACL. It's early. That's not that's not a year, 14, 16 month injury like it used to be. It's definitely been done, but so I could wouldn't... he be back by November, maybe? I, I don't think that's not impossible. Reports have just been said like he's going to miss the season due to an ACL. Does he, you know, is he able to come back towards the latter part of the year? Maybe. I think that's best case. There's no way, I don't think, before the season starts. They do I will say this. They tend to take a little longer and err on the side of caution in college versus the pros. Like pro guys get back insanely fast now, it seems like. But Rod Moore tearing up his knee and not being able to play sucks. Keon Sab no longer being on the roster before that happens sucks even more. I, I guess, Dan, yeah, you, you said it right when I started to, to describe the player. I mean, Rod Moore has been billed as one of the most valuable players on the defense yeah. by multiple coaches because of all the stuff that he does. Probably on the team. I, I, yeah, maybe on the entire team. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we all saw it at different times. You saw it, immediate thoughts. Like It's been a while now, I know, but we, we weren't on last week. So what did you think when you saw that terrible news? First thing I thought about was Saab. I'm like, can we get yeah. him back? Like, yeah, get yeah, back yeah, in the yeah. portal, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's oh, he, he left. You know, you know why he left. He left because he didn't figure he was getting them starting time. But yep, I bet I kind of bet you he's wishing he's still here now. Yeah, he left. Yeah. Before, no, he left after Saban retired, right? Yes. That's where he went. He went to Alabama. Yeah, right? he's at Alabama. Yep, he's but, at but it was Alabama. after Saban retired, so it's not yep. like he left and then Saban retired. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, you wonder, you wonder if you could get like a candid conversation. You're never going to get it, but you if you could, you you could talk to him and be like, no, oh, do you wish you would have waited it out a little? I mean, certainly yeah. he was never, he was never going to wait. Like, oh, I hope I get playing time by somebody getting injured, but yeah. it happens, dude. Like, that's why Aiden Proctor wanted the do over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I just, it won't happen. I hate it. I hate that it happened. Rod Moore's a, he's a fan favorite. I mean, he you know he put the yeah. he put the bow on the Ohio State game. He's an Ohio kid. He was a lightly recruited kid. He's now turned into. I actually was kind of surprised he came back. Yeah. Had a pretty high draft grade. So then you get him back and you're like, damn, like that really makes Michigan's defense strong. And, and now he's out. Yeah, you're, you're seeing some of the names mentioned. Brandon Hillman played a little bit last year as a true freshman. Quentin Johnson being back certainly helps for depth. But I I don't know how. Rod Moore was going to be used. He was kind of my pick to shift down to the nickel a little bit and kind of do what Mikey Sainer still did because they're similar, just very heady guys, always in the right place at the right time, not going to make a lot of mistakes, maybe not quite as twitchy as, as Sainer still, but pretty similar. I, you know, I don't know, man. It just sucks all around. Nick, I, you, you, you talk about the names back there. You've got Makari Page. You've got Quentin Johnson. You've got Jaden McBurrows. Of course, Will Johnson's going to be a, a you know an anchor at one court. Like, dude, can they can they make up for that? Like, it just seems like such a big loss, dude. I hate it. I hate it. I think they'll be able to make up for it. I mean, it's it's got to be next man up mentality. And if he's a coach on the field when he's actually on the field. My, you got to just imagine he's going to be the coach on the sideline with True. those guys. He's going to be right there with them. He's going to be in all the meetings with them. He's going to be in the DB room, you know, working with those guys. And then hopefully, you know, successful surgery, good rehab, and he comes back and he gets his next year. That's got to yeah. be his mindset right now. And it's been done that way before. You know, we've had people that have tore their ACL, missed the entire season, come back and have elite senior yeah. seasons. Yeah. Um, so it's not it's not undoable. Um, I heard saw some people asking, you know, could he possibly be back? Or you even said it, could he possibly be back in November? At what cost to him? You know, is it going to be worth it at that point to come back and rush into it? Um, you know, you're better off getting that medical year and coming back, uh, the following season at full strength, in my opinion. What'll be interesting is, you know, you can play those four games. Does he come back and play four and still take that red shirt and not, not, you know, not damage his eligibility at all. Um, 
because he's been playing as a true freshman, so he hasn't had a redshirt year. So he can he can do the right. old-fashioned redshirt year. He doesn't even technically need to do the medical approach if he doesn't want to. So, yeah, that it just man, it's a bummer. I, I'm with you. I mean, I think Michigan. You know, they've got they've got other veteran guys back there, but he was. I think if you add, you just take you know I don't know take 500 Michigan fans and say who's the most important guy on defense he's going to get some votes rod moore is going to get some votes he would be my vote and um it, it's it's hard to replace that um luckily you've got you know you've got some real strength up the middle at all three levels but yeah that that really is a bummer to miss him now you wonder who's going to step in and and kind of take that leadership role be that coach on the field cuz mikey was also built that way he's gone obviously will cool. johnson maybe you know typically you like your safety to kind of be the the quarterback of the defense back there um man i don't know and to nick's point i didn't even really thought about that you you know he's not going to have this this year on tape he probably does come back to michigan for for another year a fifth fifth year i think it would be his fifth year i think this is his true senior season was this year um so yeah that that's just a bummer eric i know you you kind of you just said he would be your vote for most important guy i mean how much does Michigan feel that? I mean, obviously they're going to try to work through it during the first week, and then oh, here's yeah. Texas. Uh, let's let's hope that the DBs can figure it out against that team. Yeah, baptism by fire. Yeah, so no kidding. Just, just doing a little bit of quick math here. November is like eight months away, so mm-hmm. I'm just going to assume Rod Moore is done for the year for the purpose of this conversation. But I was entering 24 or 2024 under the personal understanding that while Will Johnson might be the most talented defensive back on the roster. Rod Moore was the most important to keeping Mm. the team together and to fielding a really dominant defense once again. He offers so much, and I love your comparison about Mikey Sanger still because I think you can use those two players very similarly. Yeah, And this this would have been a great opportunity for him to uh, grow into that role as the defense's leader this season, and now he probably won't have that chance. Yeah, it's it's a tough blow, man. It is. I mean, when I saw that flash up, I was just like, "Oh, how does it happen to a guy like that? Like, just such an important dude. Like, he's a good guy." Yeah. Well, to to add on to that comparison, and Mikey Sainer still like, what does last year's defense look like if Sainer still went down at this time? Sure. So yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it would have been major. So I mean, you can't look at it as anything yeah. other than major. At least it yeah. happened in spring practice and not fall camp. But I don't know how you, you know, you, you just yeah. don't replace that. They've mentioned some players have mentioned um, Zeke Barry, you know, stepping mm-hmm. up. I mentioned Brandon Hillman. He played a little bit last year as a true freshman. Quentin Johnson coming back is nice. Now you've got you've got him in the fold. Makari Page, another veteran guy that's been back there a lot. Um, and you're still trying to figure out that other corner spot too. So that's like it kind of takes away. You know, you're gonna have to take a guy out of that group and put him at corner that could have maybe helped yet nickel, and then you it, it just it shakes things up quite a bit. It sucks. There's really no other way combination of those guys that fill in, even if they fill in talent wise and athletically, you don't fill in leadership wise. Yeah, it's yeah. tough, it's man. It's just not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's really hard to replace that. There's no doubt. Speaking of really well, we're just look we're cooking along with these segues. Speaking of really hard to replace, hmm. JJ McCarthy. JJ, what have they what was the nickname? Like JJ McHartthrob, they're calling him these days. Have you heard this? Oh, JJ no, McHartthrob. Yeah. I did not hear the, that one. The golden boy, the poster child. I mean, he, dude, he really is like everything you would ever want in a quarterback, like between the ears. He, you know, he's never going to get in trouble. You know, he's never going to, he's never going to have problems with his teammates. He's never going to not work. He's never not going to study. Like he's perfect up there. Um, his, his athletic ability, his throwing, people still think. Maybe he can't really throw. I'm like, dude, just find his six best throws and shut up. Like, that's what I want to say to everybody who's like, no, he didn't throw it 50 times a game. But how, do you need him to throw it a hundred more times to see that he can do every throw like with ease? I don't, I just don't understand. What the was argument. his completion percentage? Super high. And <laughs> he played yeah. like 400 less snaps in the fourth quarter than those other quarterbacks because Michigan whooped that ass every week. Like it's just, it's such a weird reason for why people are trying to write him off. I think he's going to be good in the NFL. He's, he's a little small. Like if he gets just whacked sometimes by some of those dudes, but you know, there's been other quarterbacks who haven't been big hulking guys that have been phenomenal. I can't touch him anymore. Yeah, that there is that. You can't touch him. So it'll be fine. There is that. So we were talking. 
two nineteen at the combine. He's getting bigger. He did bulk up a little bit. He, he was two nineteen. He was two nineteen at the combine, and he has looked a little bit bigger. And he um, needed to get bigger. To your point, yes. Yeah. So. We were talking about this before we went live, and then we all were kind of like, "Just shut, why are we just do this on the show? Like, this is the show." JJ's draft stock has has risen a lot. I mean, again, mm-hmm. you, you had Caleb Williams, you had Drake May, you had Jaden Daniels, the Heisman winner, Michael Penix. Bon- this is a really good quarterback class. There's a lot of quarterbacks that teams like, uh, and JJ is now one of them. I mean, he's climbed the board. He looked really good at his pro day. Looked really good at the combine. Jim Harbaugh has been playing chess, not checkers, for about a month trying to get someone to jump into that fourth spot so he can pretty much have whoever he wants at number five. That's hilarious, isn't it? If the top four teams all take quarterbacks, Jim Harbaugh essentially has the number one pick in the draft because he's already got his quarterback. So anyway, that's a discussion for another day. Where's JJ going? Who's he going to play for in the NFL? We will start with – go ahead, Eric. Where do you think JJ McCarthy ends up playing his NFL football at? Yeah, so I wrote about this earlier today. Um, NFL Network, the Lance Zierlein might be mispronouncing his name. Apologies, Lance. But he <laughs> released his mock draft 3.0, and he had the Minnesota Vikings moving up to the number four spot via yeah. trade to take J.J. McCarthy. And this is a move that we've seen predicted through other mock drafts up to this point. And while it is smokescreen season, so it's hard to tell yeah. what's real and what's illegitimate at this stage, J.J. has all of the tools, and there's a lot of quarterback needy teams at the top of this draft. So Minnesota at four taking J.J. seems to make pretty good sense to me just on the surface. And where is where is Minnesota like now? Are they like nine or something or eight? Yeah, they're lower. Top ten they're or nine. Than that, I think even. Yeah. Maybe 12. I think it might be seven. Somewhere. Okay, anyway, they're behind, they're behind the top five. Mm-hmm. They would trade yeah. into number four um, and take – I think that's – is that – the Cardinals? I think that's the Cardinals. Yeah, pick, the Cardinals, yeah. yeah. So, and they don't need a quarterback, although who the hell knows what's really going on with Kyler Murray. They seem to have a problem with him every other week. But anyway, they, they're not going to take a quarterback. So the thought is that somebody will, the first three teams are going to, and the thought is that a fourth team could jump in there. Nick, do you think that's what happened? That seems to be like the most common thought, but I don't know, man. There's some other things that make sense too. It's the most common thought, but man, I, I feel like with the NFL draft, everything that you think is common never ends up at, actually panning <laughs> yeah. out that way. We, we all sit there. We watched the Lions draft last year. We're all going, what the hell are they doing? And then it turns out they're, you know, perfect, perfect picks. Um, but I think JJ to Minnesota would be interesting just for the standpoint of we'd get to watch him twice a year. That's yeah. true. <laughs> you know, yeah. going against the Lions, that'd be fun. Um uh, but if he's super successful, I don't know that that would be uh, as fun either. Um, I do see Minnesota <laughs> jumping up because they don't have anybody. So we took we all took guesses at it. We were all wrong. Minnesota picks at eleven by the. I, I thought they were at. below right. ten. That's yeah, yeah. Maybe I seen a maybe I seen a mock draft where they traded to seven. That might that might be one I saw. Be. That could, could be, be too. Yeah, that's well, Tennessee. I, I seen a mock draft where they took him at seven. I think. So you've got yeah. Chicago at one. Presumably going to be Caleb Caleb Williams. Excuse me. You've got Washington at two. Presumably going to be Drake May. You've got New England at three. I think there's some interest for JJ there. I know Eric. Before we started the show, it does. He does kind of just feel like a Patriot somehow. So is it because of the Brady thing? It's is that why? Be. Yeah, I think so. That'd be the coolest place for him to get drafted. I think. you know, he does kind of seem like he would fit in there with the. the I know JJ Bill Belichick's gone, so team. there's a different vibe there now, yeah. but. You know. JJ is such an indisputable winner at every level of football he's played so far. Um, it, to me, it seems to be the perfect gap to to bridge between. Yeah, the Mac Jones situation happened, but Brady to JJ makes sense. It just it kind of does feel like it makes sense. I don't know if they'll do that again. You've got Jaden Daniels, you've got Bo Nix, you've got Michael. Pen- I saw Michael Penix fall out of the first round the other day. I was just going to ask, where is he at these days? <laughs> yeah, like I don't. I don't know. He's been, he's kind of made out of glass. I get that. That's yeah, about, that's say, like, I'm not as surprised about it as you think because he's had a lot of injury issues. A lot of injuries. And then you've got the Chargers and Harbaugh sitting there at number five, probably going to take either Brock Bowers, maybe the tight end. I'm sorry, the tackle from Notre Dame, Joel Alt. Who knows? Um, the Giants, six, they probably don't need a quarterback, right? I don't, I'm, I don't love Daniel mm, Jones, but I, you never know. You think? You think? You never know. JJ yeah, might not get past six. I've heard some other. I've heard some some rumblings of people wanting. Like, yeah, he went out there and had some interviews with him, and they really liked him. Yeah. So, I, it, Number, that wouldn't surprise me. Number seven, the Tennessee Titans. I don't. Who is their quarterback now? Who's the quarterback for the Titans? I don't oh, even know. Who was Tannehill? It? He's still there. Will Levis? Yeah, well, yeah. 
Is are they rolling with him? Yeah, we're know. late in the season. All right. So Malik Willis. I think if you have to play that game, then maybe he's on the table for the Titans as well at number seven. Uh, the Falcons have have since that 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 was another popular spot for him for a while there, but now they obviously they went out and got Kirk Cousins, so they're good. Number nine, the Bears. That yeah, they're back in the top ten again from from number one and nine. Um, number ten, the Jets. Doubtful, right? I mean, they have Aaron Rodgers beyond for another year, maybe. And then eleven, the Vikings. Who, if I mean, if JJ fell to them at eleven, they would have to be ecstatic about that, as opposed to trading up to number four. Yeah. And then the Broncos are twelve, and they've been talking. They've been talking about them. Them at eleven. Yeah, I've heard a lot about the Broncos moving up via trade in the top ten as well to pick potentially JJ. So, do we feel like it's impossible? I've even seen J. I've even seen JJ like in the in the color in the um like the jersey swap whatever whatever. I've seen him in the Raiders uniform also at thirteen. So, yeah. is it impossible that he falls below thirteen? Like impossible? I Do we feel like that? Antonio Pierce, the Raiders head coach, said yeah. JJ seems to be a top three pick. And <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's that's the head that's coach saying that. of an endorsement as you can get a head coach on record. Yeah. Yeah. So. Seems very, very unlikely that JJ makes it out of the top half of the first round, and uh, that'll be interesting to see. We've talked about. I used to talk about this with Chris all the time when we do the podcast, and I may have brought it up with you guys before too. How much do you care about Michigan dudes once they go to the pros? I mean, do you watch them? Like, do you? you obviously, with like Aiden, it was a note. He goes to the Lions. Like everybody loves him. But if if JJ goes to the Broncos, I mean, do you do you really care? I mean, you obviously you'd rather him do good than bad. But how locked how locked into you are and are are you with uh, Michigan guys once they're in the pros? Depends if they're on my fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've all got a little bit of that going, I guess. I don't and, know. And is are, and are they a stud when they go? Is it someone who was like your diehard, you know, fan favorite when they were at Michigan that's going which, into the NFL and actually doing something? Which you know, JJ not, would fall into that category? Right. You're not. Sure. You're not. You're not waking up on you know Monday morning going, man, how do our our offensive tackle do yesterday, you know, how many pancakes did he give? How many, how many sacks did he give up? You're not doing that. I mean, I'll look and see how Nico Collins is doing every yeah. once in a while, yeah. you know, I'll look and, and, and see those guys that, you know, are catching the ball. You obviously are uh, watching Moody out there and kicking field goals for San <laughs> Fran. So, I mean, you're, you're watching a little bit, but I don't think like you said with Aiden, it's different. He's, he's right yeah. there. We're watching him every Sunday. How did how how, how did Carson Barnhart do for the Jaguars that. last week against the Texans? Let's check exactly. That out, That's right? a great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah, and JJ is. I mean, he's like a. I mean, the quarterback position kind of has that like built in a little bit anyway. You know, you you kind of want to see what they're able to do. Yeah, I've been unfortunate that a lot of my personal favorites while they were at Michigan never stuck in the NFL. Um, I, I fancy myself a little Amara Darbo. <laughs> Back when I was younger, yeah. my, my guy was Steve Greston, and he hung around for a couple of years, but neither of them really were, you know, they were never pro bowlers. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's talk wink for a minute. Cause we didn't last week. Uh, we didn't two weeks ago. And then we didn't even do the show last week, dude. Lo- I-, I loved everything I heard from wink at his press conference. He just feels like, I know this reference is not going to land for a lot of people, but it's going to land for Dan. It's going to land for Nick. If anybody else out there is watching from our little piddly home, to, he feels like a Grover, dude. Wink Martindale <laughs> is about his business. He works hard. He, dude, he's rocking the modern mullet, you know, like the high fade, but the mullet. I don't, this dude's like, he's awesome. I, I, saw, I listened to him talk one time. I'm like, I'm all in. He's talking about how he's the OG. I've, you know, he, he, he basically created the defense that Michigan did so well. <laughs> with Mike McDonald, with Jesse Minter, it's going to look different. Wink Martindale was billed as one of the most aggressive blitzers in the entire NFL for a lot of years. He's also backed it down a little bit, though, when he didn't have the right guys to do it. So he's not hes not a – because, you know, we all love Don Brown for a while. Oh, he blitzes all the time. Dr. Blitz, love him, love him. But he never changed, and that was ultimately his downfall. Yeah, Wink like Martindale – Exactly. <laughs> Wink Martindale's not billed that way. He's talked about as, yeah, he's like, I'm more aggressive than Jesse Minter. I'm more aggressive than Mike McDonald, but he's not going to do it to the fault of his own guys. He's got some really athletic linebackers that I'm excited to watch how he uses them. He's got some good, you know, some good DBs that can blitz as well. I know you guys didn't get to see him in the room 
like I did. And I, maybe that's why I'm like, I just, dude, I love the guy already. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I really think that he, even though he's the oldest guy on staff, like, I don't think it matters at all. I was worried about that when he got I, hired. I was too. I, I didn't expect him to be the entertaining coach like that. Like awesome. I didn't expect to like him in interviews. I expected yeah. him to just be like, I go about my business and, you know, talk to Sharon. Dude, you know, I had heard, and, you, know, you know, I was like, no, this guy's, this guy's great. <laughs> yeah. I had heard he's, you know, he's, he is older. He's kind of stuck in his ways. He's going to be a little outspoken. Maybe it's not the best fit for Sharon as a first. Look, couldn't be more, couldn't be more off in my opinion. Now, granted, I saw him for 30 minutes. All right. I am not in the meeting rooms every day. I don't see, but like, I feel like a guy is who he is. And you know, when you see him, he's out there talking that way. The other coaches talking about him. I don't know. Uh, you know, Michigan has been spoiled with two great coordinators in a row. I guess, Nick, is there any worry that it just has to be worse? Cause it can't really go up anymore. You were, you were number one last year, but I, I mean, we're all, it seems like everybody's just loving wink and thinking like it's going to be fine. Yeah. I have zero worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got guys, we got guys coming back. I mean, obviously the Rod Moore thing we already talked about, but yeah. wink being the new defensive coordinator, I think makes up for a little bit because he's got the experience. He can scheme things in um, to your point. He'll blitz when he needs to blitz. If it's not working, he'll do something different. He's not going to be stubborn and set in his ways. We all love Don Brown when he was doing it at the beginning, but then he just blitzed until we were giving up, you know, 80 yard touchdowns. I, I think <laughs> Winks he's in, and, and let's be honest. He's the kind of the godfather to what the other two dudes were doing. I yeah. mean, they, 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 yeah. they spawned out of his, they spawned from him. So um, it's going to be, I, I, yeah, going into the season, I'm not worried about the defense. That's the the least of my, my uh, concerns with this team. We'll ask Eric over there. Who's looking sharp. He's got the blonde hair going. He's got the, the wild shirt. I've seen the photos. The basketball Jersey is a, a staple in your, in your uniform. Is it not Eric? I believe. Like yeah, to go. yeah, I break out some uh, vintage Kobe Bryant throwbacks regularly if I can. Love it, love it. How do we feel about Wink Martindale with the high top fade and the mullet, and he's rocking the Jordan Elevens, and he kind i don't know about the spandex underneath. I don't—he's not the Tonus guy I've ever seen, but the, uh, CJ's he's talking got, about it. The players have talked about. It. He's got—he's not what they thought. Like he's the sixty-year-old dude. He come and he's just like Dan said. Now he's the cool guy on staff, even though he's like the old. Like, how did that happen? Yeah, there's some relatability there. But yeah. I think what has really made me and you, Brandon, we spoke about this so enamored with Wink right off the bat is that he seems to have a, a real tenacity for football. And oh, that's yeah. something that comes across when someone is discussing a topic they're really passionate about. And who 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 better to teach the future Michigan players? Because when they're in the meeting room together, that's going to rub off on them. There's, there's an element of romance when Wink talks about dialing up the right blitz. Yeah, and that's, yeah. yeah that's, that's special. He has an element of je ne sais quoi to how he talks about <laughs> football. And that's, it's just really exciting. I like seeing it. and I'm, I'm anxious to see how it's going to translate to the field. He may smack you if he heard you say je ne sais quoi, but I, I like what you're – I know what you mean. <laughs> I, I understand. It. <laughs> I like a, it. Not a Grover term. He, uh, that, that is not a Grover term, not at all. For those, just I'll fill everybody in Maple Grove, little corner of our country over there in mid Michigan. It's a different, it's a different world. I don't know, Nick, you're how, how would you just, just uh, one sentence Maple Grove is sheltered. Well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> there, there is that. There is that. But I, I feel like, I feel like Wink Martindale could pull up a, pull up a, a stool at Big Joe's and he'd fit right in. I'd go back to tough. Right tough in. would be the tough would be a word. Yeah, He's tough, good. hardworking, blue collar. There is, yeah, that's that's all those things. So anyway, I I he loved stands, everything about him. What's that, Eric? He stands on business. He does stand on business for sure, and he he does have a much bigger sense of relatability than I thought he would. I I just I never knew anything about him. I, I've heard his name. You know, you know him as, as a coach, as a play caller, defensive guy. I also like the fact that he's a linebacker, dude. I don't know what it is. I feel like linebacker guys make the best defensive coordinators. I might be alone on that, but I, that was Mike McDonald. That was Jesse Minter. Now it's Wink Martindale. It just feels like they kind of get it from, you know, they're in the middle of it. They know back behind them. They know in front of them. They're um, making a usually, lot of calls. You, I was just going to say, usually your middle linebacker is kind of the guy, you know, they got the green dot in the NFL. Those are the ones kind of running the show out there. And I think Wink kind of embodies all of that. Um, you know, what we're yeah, I loved in, it. In the Wink Martindale segment. 
What we, what's that? You know what we're missing in the wink mark in, in, in the wink segment? Scott's opinion. Scott, yes. I yeah. he would he would be very yeah. good in this part. He would have right added some good color the, to that. They're about the same age. Yeah, they probably <laughs> right. go about things the same way. Yeah. Yelling at the clouds for just he whatever. Probably would have reached to the computer and slapped you for calling him the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> we're, maybe. We're surprised that the old guy's cool. He wouldn't have liked that comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He thinks he's pretty cool sometimes, I think. But all right, last but not least, we'll finish this this with this quickly. We're at about an hour. Appreciate everybody hanging on. Dude, another like six hundred people watch us. Like what I love it. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us. My dad will be excited. My dad did do you want to I'll actually read the text. I told my dad, I was like, uh, you wanna do you wanna do the podcast? And he said, um, I've got a tax man appointment at 7:30. Dang it, my fans are going to miss me. That's what my dad said. So, anyways, the sec- the no no product placement this week. <laughs> no, no, the 600 of you out there that did not get to see Scott Brown this week. Hopefully, he will be back next week and ready to roll. But we'll close with close with a little bit of basketball. A lot of football stuff, obviously, going on with spring ball. Excited that the spring game is in 17 days. But there's some there's some things happening right now too with the basketball program. Dusty May made a hire. Mike Boynton, Oklahoma State head coach, billed as a big big time recruiter. Landed Cade uh, landed Cade Cunningham, the number one player in the country a couple of years ago. Obviously, yeah, everybody knows him. Went on to be the number one overall pick for the Pistons. Um, it's funny we were kind of discussing this too before we get on, just to make sure we were all on the same page. Kind of knew a little bit about Mike Boynton, so he was let go from Oklahoma State, and they wanted Dusty May. Michigan gets Dusty May. Now Michigan also gets Mike Boynton. It sounds like it's going to be a really good uh, partnership. I don't I don't know that much about him. I know you guys don't really either. But when you hear that he has seven years of head coaching experience that just ended last year, and he, he won a tournament game, and he was decent at Oklahoma State. It wasn't like he got ran out of town. He was there for seven years. Um, and now he's one of the top assistants for Dusty May, a huge recruiter. I know we talked about what did we want. In, in a head coach before Dusty May was, I love Dusty May's press conference, by the way, too. Very impressed by him. Love the idea of his brand of basketball, really fast, up tempo, shooting a ton of threes. That's basketball these days, and that's what he wants to do. Uh, now he's got Mike Boynton, I guess. We'll put a bow on it here, Eric. Just the thought of Dusty May, his approach, Mike Boynton. We've seen some targets also in the, in the uh, transfer portal. I don't know if you guys have seen some of that. Yeah. But stuff's starting to take shape a little bit. It's still a little early, but I guess yeah. just initial thoughts on where things are right now on April 3rd. You, you can't be anything but excited at the moment. Dusty May has a lot of energy behind him. Um, yeah. He, he's been tied to seemingly every FAU kid who could be entering the portal yeah. soon. So yeah. we're, that's to be expected. But he's a guy that seems like when he has a plan, he knows how to get it done and he knows what it needs to like what he needs to get there. And he yeah. has a pretty clean slate at the moment. So he can build his coaching staff how he wants it, and he can find the right guys to fill those, what, 12, 11 open scholarships yeah. right now for the basketball team. So it's a very unique opportunity. Dusty can really put a, a strong imprint in his personal stamp on the basketball program right away. He's He's been described as like a, just a phenomenal program builder. You hope he gets the time. The Big Ten is ruthless. It's tough year to year. Um but he's been described as everything that Michigan needs right now, like culture reshift, you know, fit, filling out the roster. Looks like it's going to be almost a completely new staff, probably the new strength. I mean, everything like like Eric just said, he's really like kind of crafting this from from scratch, which is unique when Michigan's been good pretty recently. It wasn't that long ago that they were playing at a pretty high level. Nick, I don't what was your answer when I last time we talked about we said like, okay, we might not know who the candidates are, but if you had to have a coach be like one thing, do you remember what it was that you said? I can't I think Dan might have said defense mm-hmm. maybe and you might have we, said that too. I think we kind of went along those lines, but yeah. <clears throat> for me, you know, looking at this and even like looking at the tournament right now, both men's and women's game, like with the transfer portal and NIL you can make a, a, a complete roster turnover in a season yeah. and be right there. You know, you got teams that are in right now that may, were in the tournament last year, but they got completely different rosters this year. Mm-hmm. You just go out and get people. So the fact that you bring in Boyton and he's got seven years of coaching experience, he's a good recruiter. 
that's your guy who's going to go out and fill your spots for you. Hopefully yeah. he's going to look, he's going to look in the transfer portal and say, Hey guys, this is the style we want to run. You like to run and shoot threes. Come over here. This is what we're going to do. Here's the head coach who's been doing that. Mm-hmm. So to me, like, like Eric said, I, I don't think you can be anything but excited. Uh, I originally, when Juwan got fired, I thought, Oh, this could be two, three years, depending on who they get. Now I, I think my expectations are a little bit higher just with the enthusiasm around the, around the two coaches that we brought in. Um, but you know, I, I guess it's all kind of a wait and see game right now, it but it is exciting. Like Eric said, I mean, the, the main thing is you don't even know who's going to play for him yet. Right. Like there's two dudes, like there's two or three guys that are on the roster right now. They've got this, this Yale center who, I don't know if you guys have seen any clips on him. He's like seven yeah. one. He can shoot threes. He can handle it. He's Michigan is the perceived leader for him. Dusty may was in home. I think yesterday or the day before. So like things look pretty good there. To Nick's point, you've got a former head coach who knows how to build a roster. So that's just another weapon of, on your staff who can look at the portal, who can look at the recruiting landscape and find out who's going to fit the James best. is out there. Hey, you saw him in the Buckeye <laughs> uniform, I bet, didn't you? So everybody yeah. saw that. Um, but, yeah, it, it is it is exciting. I mean, I like everything Dusty May said. Dan, I don't know if you're going to get your defense. He didn't talk a lot about defense. He talked about he running fast and shooting. Like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and we'll, we'll play some defense too. I haven't, I haven't watched his Florida Atlantic teams. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't think of a game I ever watched. I'm sure I seen some in the tournament last year, but I don't remember. So yeah. I mean, I mean, I looked into it a little bit, and I mean, nothing really stood out. Like it's not like his team score a boatload of points, and you know, his de- his defenses weren't bad either. They weren't, yeah. they weren't terrible either. I mean, like, you know, se- several years they averaged holding teams in the mid 60s. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty good. I did think that based on his, at least his description of their style of play of like, he wants to push the ball no matter what in any, yeah. in any situation, yeah. they don't turn the ball over a ton. You know, I thought that was, you know, that was solid, but I just don't know a lot about him. I mean, yeah. it's, it's all about building that next team. I mean, the good things are a, it ain't going to take a lot to move up from this season, you know, <laughs> so, so year two looking pretty good could be pretty easy. And like you, like you brought up with the Florida Atlantic, transfer portal kids how about the oklahoma state transfer portal kids they got anybody yeah. good you know yeah they're probably going to be high on their list too yep yeah so i mean it's pretty easy to build a team pretty fast out of the portal i think i think there's been three or four fau guys who have jumped in there in the recent days and again they've already targeted this the center from yale and there was another yeah. another kid from like another smaller school uh Villano- no, no, I don't know. Anyway, they've, they've, they're, they're, they're working on building the roster, and I think that's like the first thing. When you start to see who's going to be on the floor, you'll have a little bit of an idea of what it's going to look like and how good they might be able to be. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a little early yet. But I do like the direction. I loved everything Dusty May said when he was at his press conference. It was he just answered the questions like he's just sharp. He was just on it. You could tell he knew his shit. You could tell he he had done it at a high level. I mean, I college basketball is not what it was there's more parody now than ever, but you take FAU to the final four, like, come on, man. Like that's, that's not, everybody's doing that. And I think that's a, you know, hopefully a sign of things to come for Michigan basketball. Cause I, I think uh, so far the other way, it's been flying colors for dusty May. So there we have it. Anything we, uh, anything we missed, anything we need to say. And if you guys are getting an echo, I apologize. I turned on the uh, the outro music here, so we should. Eric, you did start to sink away to the darkness a little bit there, but uh, yeah, it's getting darker light. here. I'm right in front of a window, and we're just, this is the natural light. Well, there you have it. Nice little hour long show. A lot of football, a little bit of basketball. Let's see if Scott Brown can make it back next week. Zach Besaw still MIA. I don't know. I it might just it might just be a four or five guy thing. Nick, real quick, how was Florida? Beautiful. Nice and warm. Got a nice tan. Laid on the beach every day. It was awesome. Some libations, some adult beverages, some a few. A Maybe few. a little yeah. eye candy? I don't know. Is that is that uh, oh, well, okay? Next time. Uh anyway. <laughs> Maybe in my twenties. <laughs> we'll be back next week, Wednesday, seven o'clock. Again, six hundred people. I, I'm just I'm I'm just blown away by how many people are sticking with us for the full hour. Really appreciate that. And uh, we'll be back next week. See ya. If I could hit the end button. Thank